Hey y'all, Grown Black Folks Talk, another early, well for San Francisco, another glorious midsummer day with a little breeze and very little fog and I'm just out here on my way back on doing my round and um, I had a thought yesterday as I was walking back at the end of the video I put up yesterday and this is kind of a deep one but it goes with what we're going to talk about probably tomorrow. Um, about Mr. Drew Duran and the state of the black community as regards the men. Uh, we have done some analysis, Tony Gaskins has, so Walter Jones now has, about the characteristics of emotionally unstable men. And it seems that you hear women saying things like, you know, he, I thought he was everything I ever wanted, and then he turned out to be, that's common. And I had a thought about how this could repeatedly happens to us, and what we can do to change it. So I gotta give you the bad news first and then we'll talk about what we do to do better. Uh, in brief, both of them, stop being an idolater. Now, let me break this down here. You don't have to be a Christian to understand this is true, okay? If you live in a Christian country, or uh, at least a Christian inclined country, now there are some countries that are like very strongly Catholic, but if you live in a country of like this, or one that has deep Christian influences. And if you live in the black community in this country, you know that there are an awful lot of people around you who are worshiping a man that we read in a very old book that once walked the earth, who died on the cross for the sins of the world, rose again the third day, has left but has promised to return and in the meantime take care of his people through his Holy Spirit, working through their fellow believers, right? Okay, so you know who Jesus Christ is. And so you have a whole bunch of people out there, men and women, worshiping a man they have never seen. With no promise that he will return in their lifetime that they could ever see him. But that's the default position. But the thing about it is, and again, you don't have to be a Christian to believe this. You just have to have a reasonable grasp of history. There are men and women and even older children who have given up livelihood and advancement and even life itself because of the benefits that this man named Jesus offers. 2,000 year track record. People have given up things by the me. I'm not talking about people that have colonized in Jesus' name. I'm talking about people that are living, who are not advancing in the world because he has said no about one thing, he has said trust me about others. In the United States of America, for just one example, there was a school shooter who was walking around in school shooting Christian people. And there were young people. They hadn't even started their earthly lives with really. These are still children who, to whom the Lord Jesus Christ had revealed himself enough and had proven enough promises good that they were willing to and did die to not deny him. Outside of the United States, in many other countries where uh, state, well, you have atheist states and you also have states where other religions are practiced and it is forbidden to proselytize. People give up employment, jobs, life. Because they know the Lord Jesus Christ. They have put their faith in Him for life and death and life beyond. 2,000 years of it. Okay? So he has a track record. Whatever it is that he's doing, whether you believe it or not. And then you have stories about people that said, I would not have been able to do this if the Lord Jesus had not been in my life. You've heard these, if you're black, you've heard these for a goodly portion of your life. And then there's, I remember seeing a story online about why a black Muslim, black, black Muslim man became a Christian. He, in his mosque, had brought food to some very, very poor black people who were struggling. And he said, it frustrated me at first. They kept saying, thank you, Jesus, as they got that food. But then I realized that they knew a God who could work through other people and that they had so much joy and so much knowledge of his provision that it didn't bother them to get food from a Muslim. And that relationship that they had with their God, I wanted because you cannot be close to Allah. You can't have a personal relationship. He's too high, he's too good. But that this they knew that he was caring for him, and they had this personal closeness between them. And eventually this man became a Christian. Atheists have studied Christ and Christianity, history of the world. Again, 2,000 year track record, and realized that Christ was real. 
no less a person than Jordan Peterson right now. You know, the man who eats the manosphere figures for lunch from time to time, who is the strong white manifestation of this movement toward conservative manhood, is wrestling with Jesus Christ because he did a video talking about how he is so struck with who Jesus is right now. He's not saved from what we can tell now, but he is being, just like C.S. Lewis before him, is being tugged in that direction. People who have in their past no reason to feel that they have a use for Christ somehow get yanked off in his direction. That's a 2,000 year track record. Even if you don't account for the fact that he is God of very God and his track record is everything you see around you right now. Even if you don't want to account for that, he has a track record that you can look up, that you can check on, and it's powerful. There's a billion people who subscribe to it in one form or another. Two and a half billion if you count the fact that even the Muslim world considers Jesus a major prophet. That's a track record. So, ladies, you do know that when you sit around and fantasize about the man who's going to complete your life and rescue you from whatever, you are an idolater, right? And the culture of men encourages, I told y'all last time I was out here, or the second to last time, about the word of Disney versus the word of God, encourages you, the men who produce fantasies, encourage women at very young ages to have this idea that some prince is going to come along and make their life what it needs to be. This is deeply encouraged, because when you have a population of women who are idolaters, then of course, the only man who can show up in your life to fill these fantasies is an antichrist. Someone who wants that spot, but has no qualifications. You're looking at a man who has maybe, depending on how old you are when you listen to this video, he has between maybe a 10 to 30 year track record of being an adult. If he's in the black community, one out of every three such men is a felon. So he has a track record, indeed. But it does not stack up to the point that you should spend your whole life ideating about someone to step into that role. Our problem, ladies, is idolatry. In a society where black male worship and white male worship, male worship, period, is encouraged. White male worship, because just like it was in the Roman days, their gods are on their money. The Romans and the Greeks had gods who were idealized identification of themselves. That's self-worshiping culture. Black male worship here, same thing. And then you occasionally you do meet black female worship that is kind of popping up as well. You do have more goddess worship coming along, but that's all self-worship. So we have made an idol of some men. Women do this too, by the way. I mean, men do this too. That's why they keep going from woman to woman to woman to woman. Because in their heads, a lot of them think I'm going to settle down when I meet the one that fulfills all these fantasies that I have. But of course, a real human being is not going to be able to actually do that. So they keep ruining their lives and the women's lives around them looking and wrecking people and picking up say, STDs and dropping off babies they have no intent to tell for the same reason. The problem is idolatry. Because again, any time you're going to spend a significant portion of your life not developing it, not building, because someone else has to do that for you, any time a woman is waiting on a man to make her life everything it needs to be, that's idolatry. He doesn't have a 2,000 year track record. Probably, like I said, he's only been an adult between 10 and 30 years on average. And all the conversation about income and height and build and even race and color will not solve this as long as you are in idolatry. You don't have to be a Christian to understand what I'm saying. Consider what I'm saying. We have been programmed to look for some man to complete us. Gentlemen, you have been programmed to look for some woman to complete you. You are supposed to, here's the resolve. You are responsible for taking everything that has been put on you and making of it the life that you need. Your job can't do it. Your salary can't do it. Your parents can't do it. You are responsible for that. And you have to take up that responsibility in full such that you have a life worth living. 
you know, it's like two puzzle pieces, okay? Each one is meant to fit in one spot because there is a master designer, a puzzle creator, who already knows what that picture is supposed to use for, but every piece is important. But if you've got these, those end pieces that are, you know, in the, each of the corner pieces, each piece is important. Each piece has its function. The puzzle is not complete without each one. But everything ain't going to fit every puzzle piece. But each one has its purpose before the rest of them come along. Now, no human being is the master designer. So just take that out of the, take that out of the equation. So here we are living down here, putting a life together that fits in with millions and billions of other lives. And in 3.9 billion people, do you realize there's only one other puzzle piece at a time that's supposed to fit with you, at least in the United States of America? If you live in a polygamous country, great. But ladies, let me tell you something. When you are willing to become a lawbreaker for a man, and polygamy is against the law in the United States, whenever a man knows that you're so desperate that you're willing to break the law for him, you are, of all women, most miserable. Because again, you've made that man antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin. It is inevitable that that is who you will get. But let me go back to where I was. You had better learn how to live the best life you can. Because remember, inside this life that you live, you only add in one more person. Now, if you're young enough to have children, great. You might add three, four, five together. But the point is, out of that many billions of men, you're going to sit around and wait on one other person instead of living your life? As a single woman, I enjoy my life. I don't enjoy every part of it, but I enjoy my life. And I have no need. And see, this is helps help you avoid certain other things. Uh, if a man is not my dad, position's filled. He's not God, position's filled. When men come talk about, well, you're 40 now, and you need to be held accountable. No, I don't have an account with you, sir. Because to have an account, you have to have and to hold. And to do that, we have to be married. You're not offering marriage, I have no account with you. you drive on. I don't need you like that. You stop listening to the foolishness of men who are trying to make you desperate to receive their antichrist ways. You stop listening to men who are in your ears talking about you're a loser at 30. By who's, who, what are the men who are doing that running? Uh, the universe seems to be doing fine today. It's about 75 degrees, a light breeze. The universe seems to be doing fine today. So they're not running that. Are they running this country? No, they're not. Are they running their communities any other direction but in the ground, in general? No, they are not. So, what kind of power do they have when you realize that you only need one man out of 3.9? And that man is likely, if you want a man who's healthy and healed, and you do the work to be healthy and healed, you only need one. And without that one, don't think of your life as a minus one. But you're just waiting for this other person to add all this and add all that. Think of you will add one more to a life that's already full of people. And I'm not saying you add it as an accessory. I, I see women, black women talk about, well, man is just an accessory. No, a man is not an accessory. Because I can tell you this for sure. Uh, a man should not be in the position of having to think he can save your life. But I tell you what, the wrong man can do more to destroy it than any other person you will ever meet in your entire life. Because, like I said, you can get the man of sin. You can get a son of perdition. You can get that easy. They're everywhere. A man is not an accessory. You do yourself no favor by going out and looking for an accessory. That's not appropriate. Just like a woman should not be treated as an accessory. You do have to learn how to see people as human beings. But if you are living a full and joyous life, you are more likely to be attracted to and be attracted and be attractive to it's two different things to men who also are looking to do that as well and then what happens is you blend and extend at 41 i'm very clear about the things that i enjoy in life and what i want to do i'm very clear on what my responsibilities are and being clear on those things knowing that only one man 
should be added at 41 you know if i can be married for 20 30 40 years i probably will not at 81 marry again or even 71 marry again you notice it's usually men who are remarrying multiple times after certain ages not women as often it's harder for us because at 81 granted most men at 81 we can get someone younger will because he needs to be turned on and also have strength to clean up after him as he continues to age. People are looking for a nurse with a purse, and so she's got to be in physically good shape. But beyond that, there are still women because of the ac access that they have, and there are some gorgeous women of their age class who are black at that age um, who can have another husband, but they're just like, no, nah, I did that, and now I'm free. I'm enjoying my life. Well, you can be free earlier. Get your life together. Focus on getting your life together. What's that thing that you do better than anybody else? Make time to nourish that so he can nourish you. Get around black women who are learning how to enjoy life alone first. But also black women who are not constantly complaining about men, not constantly focusing on men. Get around women like that who are living their life. Get into the habit of not idolizing, putting this man in the place of Christ who you cannot see, who's supposed to rescue you, but is not doing a darn thing for you right now. He doesn't know you yet. He doesn't love you yet. Stop doing that. Get into the habit of being in circles of women that are supportive. Get in the habit of being in circles of people who are enjoying life and about life. And I don't mean the nightlife. I don't mean the clubs. I don't mean things where sex is always on the table. Y'all learn some discipline. Because your lust will lead you into the arms of an antichrist and having his baby. I learned some discipline. But that means having a full life in other ways. Not as a compensation, but because life is to be built on and enjoyed. And before you can do this as a partner, you need to know how to do this as a single and not be codependent. As Jailhouse Production said many years ago, codependency kills. You learn how to know how to enjoy your life as a single and then you get to take the opportunity to learn how to enjoy your life as a partner. If you skip that step, you're going to get the Antichrist every time. If you're a man, you're going to be a broken old man, trying to be the Christ in every woman's life, hoping that she'll be what you want her to be, and she's never going to be able to do it. And today's women are not going to even try half the time, because word is getting out. I know you gentlemen are upset by the articles and the studies that are showing that there's not a rise of single, lonely old women because women will network among themselves and figure out how to enjoy their life as much as they can. The rise of single, lonely old men who not having networks with their brothers and not having networks with formal relationships with sisters to form stable families wake up around 45 to 60 and realize they're no longer the youngest man testosterone is dropping, the male pattern baldness is patterning, and they are the ones that find themselves on the other side of the wall. A woman can always get a man later in life than a man can, because so much more of what a man has to do is be able to provide. And when you can no longer do that at certain ages to the extent that younger men who are up on the 21st century environment, you are in a terrible position. I'm going to talk about this more tomorrow, but black men spend their lives idolizing men whose careers and their millions are over at 40. Who are talked about like aging slaves at 33, Kevin Durant. So, we have to stop idolizing the men that idolize those men. Because your problem is your idolatry. Your problem is, you're expecting someone who you've never met, who you've never seen, who does not know you, does not care that you exist. And even if he's a good man, has not had a chance to decide whether he wants to love you. The rest of you are hoping that some woman is going to woman is going to make you feel like a man. And you don't know how to be a man and feel like a man for yourself. Your problem is idolatry. Because nobody can rescue you from the work that you're not doing on yourself. Even as a Christian, I have to have life coaching. Even as a Christian, I have to be around women that remind me to be the best that I can be. There's no way around that. No one can rescue you. God is not going to rescue you for the work that you're not doing. He's going to let you deal with consequences. And then after that, you'll be willing to do what you need to do. 
running in and out of relationships is not going to do it. Learning how to be satisfied as a single person, as a uni, before making a union out of two. If you don't know how to do it as a one, you're not going to be able to do it as a two. So Walter Johnson, so Walter Jones show talked about his two marriages on his show last night about emotionally unstable men and about how he's happier in his 55s. At mid 50s, he's not 55. He's in his mid 50s now. Don't know his exact age. Uh, but he's in his mid 50s. He's happier now. He said the reason that my marriages didn't work is that I was an emotional wreck. Who married an emotional wreck? Well, that's what happens when you don't have your stuff taken care of. But this, again, the problem is idolatry. Decenter other people as the source of you getting your life and go get your life. Go get your life. Okay. That's all I got for you today. Again, it is incredibly hot out here by San Francisco standards. But the other thing is, it's also just a nice day to sit here and enjoy the peace and quiet. So I'm going to get my life and do that because I got plenty waiting on me when I get back to the house. And I will get on to the work there. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Yeah, have a good day. Goodbye.